rainfall. Let's take a quick look at the stages in the formation of rain. The first stage is nucleation, during which water collects on condensation nuclei and forms tiny cloud drops. This type of nucleation occurs in the tropics. In the second stage, the crystal droplets continue to grow in size through condensation. If the drops or crystals grow large enough, they start falling. The amount of rainfall depends on the moisture content of the air, which depends on three main factors. The first factor is land and sea contrast. More rainfall occurs along coastal regions, since the source of water vapor, the sea, is closer than in the interior of continents. The second factor is the direction of the prevailing winds. Onshore winds from the sea bring more rainfall than winds blowing from the land, which are offshore winds. Presence of mountains also affect the rainfall. When mountains obstruct moist winds, they are forced to give rain on the side of the mountain facing a wind, known as the windward side. The side of the mountain facing away from the wind, known as the leeward side, remains dry. The leeward side of the mountain is also known as the rain shadow, since it receives very little or no rain. Beside these factors, convection, cyclones, or the meeting of warm and cold air masses are the causes of rainfall. Based on these causes, there are three types of rainfall. The first type is convectional rainfall. Convection currents are normally set up in the atmosphere due to local heating. These currents rise up at the center and are drawn up from the sides. The very rapid rising of this warm, moist air results in the formation of cumulonimbus clouds, which give heavy rain, usually accompanied by thunder and lightning. But the rainfall does not last long. These are called thunder showers. Convection rainfall is very common in the equatorial regions where it occurs almost every day in the afternoon. Hence, it is also called the four o'clock rain. The second type of rainfall is the relief or orographic rainfall, which is the most widespread form of rainfall. When moisture bearing wind encounters a mountain barrier, it is forced to rise. As the wind rises up the mountains, it cools to a saturation point. In further cooling, rain occurs. Mahabaleshwar receives more rain than Pune. This is because Mahabaleshwar lies on the windward side of the Western Ghats, while Pune lies on the leeward side. The third type of rainfall is cyclonic or frontal rainfall. When a warm air mass and a cold air mass meet, the warm air being lighter is forced over the heavier cold air. The warm air cools on rising. The moisture in it condenses on cooling beyond the saturation point, forming cumulonimbus clouds which bring heavy rain. Cyclonic rainfall is common in middle latitude where the warm westerlies meet the cold polar air. As the name suggests, this rainfall is associated with cyclones and depressions, which are centers of low pressure. The distribution of rainfall on the earth depends on location and the season. The equator region receives convectional rainfall throughout the year. This is because the rate of evaporation is high since temperatures in these regions remain high throughout the year. Eastern margins of continents in the subtropical latitudes come under the influence of the trade winds throughout the year. That brings plenty of rain to the eastern margin. 
western margins of continents between latitudes 40 degrees and 60 degrees come under the influence of the westerlies throughout the year, which brings plenty of rain to the western margins. Thus, these western margins, the equator region, and the eastern margins in the subtropical latitudes are the regions of heavy rain. Let's take a look at regions of scanty rainfall. Polar regions receive very scanty rainfall. This is due to extremely low temperatures, bringing about very little evaporation and precipitation. Western margins of continents that come under the influence of trade winds is another region of scanty rainfall. This is because trade winds flow from the eastern direction and they are dry by the time they come to the western margin. Tropical deserts are located on the western margin. Eastern margin of continents that come under the westerlies belt is also the region of less rainfall. Since westerlies flow from the western margin, they become dry by the time they reach eastern margin. Temperate deserts are located on eastern margin of continents. Terms heavy, moderate, scanty in case of rainfall are relative terms. In tropical regions, evaporation is high and hence rainfall of around 200 centimeters and more annually is considered heavy. Rainfall between 100 to 200 centimeters annually is considered moderate. Rainfall between 35 to 100 centimeters annually is poor and rainfall below 35 centimeters annually is considered scanty. In temperate regions, there is relatively less evaporation and rainfall. Therefore, a rainfall of 100 centimeters annually is considered to be heavy. Rainfall between 35 to 100 centimeters is considered to be moderate. Whereas rainfall below 35 centimeters annually is said to be scanty. When the annual rainfall of a place is less than 25 centimeters, it is called a desert. There are many regions in the world that are identified as deserts. The average monthly or annual distribution of rainfall of a particular region is generally shown either by rainfall maps or by isohyas. A rainfall map is divided into various rainfall regions showing different amounts of rainfall such as heavy, moderate or scanty. These regions are colored or shaded differently. Isohyas are lines of equal precipitation, that is, the lines to join places having the same average or monthly rainfall. These lines are drawn at uniform intervals. Temperature and rainfall are the two most important elements of climate. Not only temperature, but also rainfall of a place is affected by various factors which ultimately affect the climate. The amount of solar radiation received increases with latitude. Therefore, the temperature decreases from the equator to the poles, leading to a reduction in the rate of evaporation. Hence, the amount of rainfall also decreases. The Earth's atmosphere is heated by the energy absorbed by the molecule of gases and other impurities. With an increase in altitude, temperature decreases and more condensation takes place. Thus, the amount of rainfall increases. The direction of the wind also affects the amount of rainfall. Warm winds make the place they blow into warmer and the cold winds make the place they blow into colder. Onshore winds contain more moisture than offshore winds. Land and sea contrast is another factor that affects rainfall. Land heats up and cools down faster than the sea. That is why land is warmer than oceans in summer and cooler than seas in winter. Places near the sea are cool in summer and warm in winter. 
while interiors of continents are hot in summer and cold in winter. Therefore, margins of the continents get more rainfall than the interiors of continents. Mountain ranges also bring about contrasts in rain, with the windward side receiving heavier rainfall than the leeward side. The Himalayas prevent the cold winds of Northern Asia from blowing into India. That is why Ganga Plain is warmer in winter than Southern China on the same latitudes. Ocean currents also show their effect on rainfall. This effect is especially felt in the coastal areas which have onshore winds. When these winds blow over a warm current, they pick up water vapor and bring more rain to coastal regions. Winds that blow over a cold current pick up very little water vapor and give less or no rainfall at all. Vegetation reduces temperature by releasing moisture in the air which makes the place cooler and thus it is also a factor because of which rainfall increases. Have you ever seen a rain gauge? It is used to measure the amount of rain. Also snowfall or hail is measured by melting the same and including it in the total rainfall of the place. The simplest type of rain gauge is a funnel resting on top of a metal cylinder. The stem of the funnel passes into a glass bottle placed inside the metal cylinder. This entire apparatus is protected by placing it inside another metal casing. The rain gauge is placed in an open area away from trees and buildings buried in the ground such that 30 centimeter of it remains above the ground level. This prevents splashing and evaporation of water collected in the jar. When it rains, the rainwater passes through the funnel and trickles into the glass bottle. At the end of 24 hours, the rainwater is emptied into a graduated cylinder. The graduation on the cylinder is accurate to one hundredth of a millimeter. The reading thus obtained indicates the depth of the rain that has fallen over an area equal to one hundredth of the top of the funnel. The depth of the snow is measured with the help of a measuring rod. The depth of the snow is measured at several places and its average is taken. The equivalent rainfall is calculated by considering 10 cm of fresh, dry snow equal to 1 cm of rain. Effects such as rainbows, thunderstorms, lightning, thunder are associated with rainfall. Let's take a quick look at them. A rainbow is seen in the sky only when we are facing the rain and the sun is behind us. Rainbows are caused by refraction and total internal reflection of sunlight. Each drop of rain acts as a prism and breaks up with the white light into the primary colors such as violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red. The second special effect is in the form of thunderstorms, which are severe local storms accompanied by thunder and lightning. Within a thunderstorm cloud, an intense electric field develops with negative charges collecting in the lower part of the cloud and positive charges in the upper part. A positive charge is induced on the ground for several kilometers around the storm. Lightning occurs when the two charges build up enough to overcome the resistance of air and a bolt of lightning is produced. Thunder is also a special effect, which is caused by the rapid heating and expansion of the air through which lightning passes. Although thunder is more prominent than lightning, it is not dangerous. To conclude, we may say that the manifestations of nature in the form of humidity and rainfall brought about by the phenomenon of hydrologic cycle are imperative for the survival of the planet 
that we live in.